All right, today we're doing brunch, and uh, on the menu is uh, chicken crepes, and I'm just going to do something, or chicken crepes, that doesn't even sound right, I'm doing uh, chicken and mushroom sort of filled crepes, and, and hopefully right now you're probably looking at an overlay of what that looks like. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing today, it's a quick and easy brunch, slash lunch, slash breakfast, and um yeah, I'll get straight to it. So what you're going to need for today's recipe is some chicken, some mushroom, some herbs, which I got from the garden, and I'll walk you through that, uh, and some cheese, and some other bits and pieces, and I'll talk you through as I get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the chicken last. Um, actually, no, I lie. You know what I'm going to do? I wasn't going to do it this way, but I've decided last minute yeah, I'm going to do it that way. I'm just going to pop, pop this uh, piece of chicken... Um, onto the, uh, a saucepan of hot water and I'm going to boil it up and essentially it's just a piece, a half a piece of breast if you will and uh, with the skin off. So I'm just going to boil that and I'll be right back. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're just going to chuck that onto the stove for a bit and uh, boil that up. I, didn't, I haven't put any salt or anything. I'm just going to boil it to cook it because the reason why I'm going to boil it up is I want to shred it with my hands at the end of this. So I'm going to just chuck that on the stove. Cut up some mushrooms just roughly chopped up I do it a little bit finely I like to do it finely you will actually need a lot of mushrooms because mushrooms shrink when you cook them so right once you get about that much worth of mushrooms about that much worth of mushrooms for the half a piece of breast it sounds about right to me anyway This is my technique. I do the tops off. Then I do this. I slice into it like that. Without cutting it all the way to this side. So I'm trying not to cut across there. And I just cut down on it like this. I sort of bring it to its side and I go... Now, some dry bits on this onion, I really don't mind. You can't tell. Now, when you're cooking your chicken, you probably want to just keep the heat on low once it's boiled up. Because the last thing you want to do is it froth everywhere. I've got some basil from the garden. From our little sort of um, garden. It is a little garden. It's just everything's on pot plants. I've given it a, a rinse already. And I didn't pick the best looking leaves, I picked the leaves that were ready. And it's so fragrant right now. You don't have to use basil, like the combinations I've done this with is coriander. Gosh, it's whatever I've got in the fridge, you can do it spring onion if you really want. Spring onion is a bit strong in flavor. Um, and for crepe it can be a bit strong, even coriander, like I mean it's sort of more Asian-y but it sort of works. You can't really tell. Well, you can tell, but um, you can tell. It gives it a slightly different twist each time. Um, so, yeah, and the other ones, are the obvious one, the preferred one is parsley, which actually I don't have any of. So I'm going to go with um, um, what else I could find in there, which was a bit of um, um, oregano as well. So I'm just taking the leaves so I get rid of that stalk. If you don't have anything, then run off to the market and buy some. And if you don't have a herb garden, you really should. Because, man, it gets expensive buying herbs. And just roughly chopping it up will do. This is a block of Colby cheese. I'm going to just scrape, I don't know, scrape, shave some up. Um, you can use any cheese you want, whatever floats your boat and I actually want quite a bit of cheese as well so and that is as much as I like right there cool so by the time you're done cutting it up the chicken's actually probably almost ready I don't know if you can see that but um, it's almost ready or it should be and I'm just going to put some cold water on it 
just cause I'm going to rip it now with my fingers. If it gets a bit hot, I'll use a fork. In fact, you know what? I'm going to use a fork. Now, if you don't want to shred it, you don't have to. The alternative is you could have just cut it up in the first place. But it is much better shredded up. So I'm just going to start heating up the pan now. It's not even close to heated up. Um, and I'm going to pour in a little bit of olive oil. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to use normal cooking oil. Now you can use butter if you want. That level of decadence is entirely up to you. I'm just getting the salt out. Right. Just going to coat the bottom of that pan. It's obviously not hot yet. So I'm going to wait for that to get hot. Once your pan is hot and good to go, you start off with the onions. Or at least I always start off with the onions. So that goes in there first. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the onions. I'm going to put the mushrooms in straight away. And I'm just going to stir that around for a bit. And to speed this up a little, I'm just going to put three or four drops of water in. Just around and use it like a steaming thing. Where is it? Come on. You don't really need to put much because there's naturally juices coming out. So just a little steam. Close it up like that for a bit and uh, that should come out. That should cook a little bit faster. I think probably wait for a total of, I don't know, two minutes or so. I don't really think two to three minutes. I don't think I need to wait for much longer than that. Just watching it and you can smell the flavors coming out right now and you can see it sort of steaming up in there and it starts getting its own juices out. I've got it on high heat. So it may brown a little at the bottom and that's not a bad thing. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, look at that, starting to brown. Beautiful, okay. Let's give that a quick stir and see what we got. Perfect, lovely. Sweat it out a little bit more. Okay. Right, next thing I'm going to do is chuck the chicken in and stir it around. So that's all that shredded chicken from before. And you can see 300 grams of chicken is a lot of chicken. And it looked like I had a lot of mushrooms at first, but you know what? It works out about right. So stir that up a bit. And it's at this juncture I'm going to add about a, about a teaspoon of salt. Great. Now I'm just going to not try to overcook it. I mean, you have to cook the chicken, obviously, but uh, I don't want the chicken to get dry. So now I'm going to chuck on the herbs. And I'm going to pour a little bit of milk in it. Just a little bit. About that much. Beautiful. Let it cook in there for a bit. Okay, that should be good. Look, it's nice and moist. That's long enough. You really don't need to overcook it at all.
Now at this stage I'm going to turn the heat off and just chuck the cheese on it as well. And just let it sit on top for a bit. Beautiful. Right. That's the chicken. I've turned the heat off. I'm going to take it off the heat and just close it there and let it sit for a bit. And let's go make some crepes. Right. To make the crepes, and this is the way I make crepes. Um, you know what? I might even go hunt around for some crepe recipes from some of the other guys out there. And link you to a few and you can just pick your favorite way of doing it. This is my way of doing it. And I don't really do a lot of measuring. Honestly speaking, I'm doing this for you. Um, the way I do it is I normally just pour the flour and then guess from there. But I've been told um, for every cup of flour you want roughly one egg, I think. Is that what you do? Yeah, okay. See, that's what my wife does. She's holding the camera. All right, so about two cups of flour in there equals two eggs. That gives about, what, eight crepes, roughly, a bit more, a bit less. We'll find out in a moment. A um, couple of eggs, so that's one. Unos, dos. Dos egos. Great. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of milk in there. Now, I don't have a recipe for this. So you know what? I'm going to start counting how much I put. This is about half a cup. So I'm going to put half a cup first. I think that's more than enough. Yeah. How does this thing work? Oh, in reverse. Okay, gotcha. So I'm going to start it on low. See, this is the way I like to do it. I just pour water, water, milk in, and guess. Now, the tricky bit though of doing it this way is that if you overwater it like I just did, it could potentially screw the whole lot up. And they might have to put a bit more flour in. Uh, no, that looks about right. So I'm just looking at it, make sure it's not lumpy. And then the key thing I'm going to start checking after I've done this is... Well, do I have enough batter, A, and B, if I don't have enough batter, uh, well, I'm making to see, I'm just checking to see how sticky it is at the bottom. So I'm just going to use this, and you can see it's quite thick at the bottom. It's still very thick. So I'm just going to add a bit of water in, and mix it by hand. It's still quite sticky at the bottom. Yep, definitely is. So I'm just going to put a bit more still. So the, the consistency I'm going for is like sort of slowly drips off. Slowly drips off your spoon or spatula. And that's probably still a bit thick. You should almost still be able to fluff up. So it's still a bit... Still a bit thick. I'm going to put a bit more water in. I like it quite watery so it pours quickly. You do your crepes how you want to do it. Yep, should be able to swirl that around. It's really important that you can swirl it around. Unless you got that little stick thing. Because I've seen people with these crepe makers and they've got this little stick thing and they pour it in and they use a stick and then you get it nice and flat. And if you've got one of those, then you just do it that way. Um, but because I don't, and I'm just going to use like a little frying pan thing, I, I like it being watery so I can swirl it around. And that feels about right. Okay, so to make the crepes, I've got this going up on high heat. I'm going to grab a plate as well. 
Okay, the first thing I'm doing is I'm heating up the pan, and I like it pretty hot. And uh, this is an old trick my mum showed me once upon a time, and I still do it now, and I'm sure a whole bunch of your mums do it. You just basically put some oil in a plate, and you use that uh, bit of um, paper towel to sort of grab it and wipe it around here like so. And it sort of gives you some oil without being too obscene and still be able to coat it quite nicely. All right, let's try Michelle's technique now. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, that worked out better than I thought it would. Cool. Easy. Just like a professional. Get in there, okay. Actually, it's really important to mention as well. You don't want to leave it sitting in there for too long because it, it can dry and it can bubble up. All right, so we're pretty much done now. All we need, we've got our crepes over here, and we've got the uh, chicken uh, mushroom mix with all that goodness which we did a second ago. And all I'm going to do is make up the crepes. So I'm going to grab one of them here, one of them here. Grab some chicken, put it in. Make sure you get some of that lovely cheese over the top of it. To fold it this way, then this way. Then you grab the edge and you pull it in. Then you roll it. And that gives you one perfect little crepe. This, so you cut it down the middle. You take these two, you, well, you bring these two this way, put these two over the top, like that. Finally, what you do is you grab a bit of the sauce and then drizzle it over the top. All right, I'm just gonna bust this open because I am I'm hungry. It's quick. It's easy. It's not that easy. It's not, I mean, it's not that quick, but it's it's quite impressive. It's fun to make when you have a few friends over for brunch or something. Mm. All right, so this is Foodie Tea signing off. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and uh, please make sure you hit the old subscribe button.